let's talk some football. I am in the car, so I'm not going to be looking. But I got all kinds of analysis for this game here. Stick around. Let's get you some props and some live insight on this game. Uh, so a couple key factors uh, in this game. I'm going to talk about the key factors, offense coordinators, defense coordinators, new players changing up, and then ways to target that in some player props. So the big uh, additions slash subtractions, uh, Derrick Henry for the Ravens, obviously the big one, uh, but by far, 10 times more important is Legereus Sneed, the cornerback for the Chiefs, is no longer. He's a Titan, and no one, and I mean no one, is talking about that, which is mind-blowing to me. Uh, what Spagnola was able to do last year while getting creative with Trent McDuffie and Legereus Sneed mixed with the pressure of Carl Loftus and Chris Jones, you know, that can't be replaced. So it's going to be a big question mark. Uh, Legereus need in that off in that on, with that defense. Uh, so a couple uh, key factors here in this one. Um, number one, Spagnola, maybe my favorite defensive coordinator in football. He's right up there with Brian Flores and Mike McDonald, the old defensive coordinator for the Ravens. Another key factor, him going to Seattle. Um, he's a great defensive mind, tons of disguised coverages, uh, but. Here nor there, we're talking about Spagnola. So Spagnola is a blitz-heavy coach. Um, if I knew that this was a playoff game, I'm taking the Chiefs minus three, 10 out of 10 times. They were my biggest bet of the playoffs last year in Baltimore. I uh, had them on the money line, and that was really no sweat in that one. But the reason that I was on the Chiefs in that game particularly was the defense and Spagnola. You have to isolate the playoffs versus the regular season for Spagnola, especially against Lamar. It's a key factor. When you look at Spagnola in the playoffs versus Lamar, almost every damn snap was a blitz. He brought safety, corner pressures off the edge, and kept Lamar in the pocket to not allow him to use his legs at all. Now, the regular season is different. This game does not mean the world to the Chiefs. Obviously, it's a big game. Week one, you don't want to lose. But this is not the playoffs. This is not the Super Bowl. It is not technically a must win. Will Spagnola show his hand again, the, his full hand? I don't think so. You know, I don't think he's going to bring as much pressure. They're going to try to play maybe a little bit more defense and see if they can't stop him that way. You now, if it were the playoffs, he's bringing the heat every time. It means everything. So that's that. That's a big factor there, especially with Legereus Need. Now, when you look at the Chiefs on offense, the number one question mark I have is the same as last year. It's freaking Matt Nagy, the worst offensive coordinator. I don't know if it, you know, it's him and Andy Reid, but Nagy gets cute way too much for my liking, particularly on third down. Now, if you want to get cute on first and second down, run some trick plays, do whatever, I don't care. On third down, you do not take the ball out of your best player's hands, particularly Patrick Mahomes, who might just be the greatest quarterback to ever lace him up. When it's third down, you want the ball in his hands, simply put. Matt Nagy, all kinds last year, killed the Chiefs on third and one, third and short, where they would run some kind of gimmicky cheat play and try to catch the defense off guard, and they would lose yards and then have to punt or kick a field goal. When you have Mahomes, it's third down, you let Mahomes be Mahomes. End of story. Killed him last year. And, damn it, it probably is going to kill him this year, too, in the regular season. Uh, don't be surprised by that. On the other side of the ball, the Ravens' offense, Chiefs' defense, Derrick Henry. There's a lot of question marks with that offensive line. Uh, they're probably, they've are probably already said they're going to be moving guys around mid-game. They did it a little bit last year, but expect even more of it this year. Anytime you do that, ah, it's not too promising. No, maybe they've got – Harbaugh's a great coach, or maybe he's got something he likes there. Uh, Monken as a – the offensive coordinator, you saw what he did at Georgia in year one with Lamar, uh, MVP Lamar. Will they do it again? Probably. I think this Ravens team is going to be damn good. They're a phenomenal regular season team year in, year out. Uh, but what are they going to do? Now let's talk about some props here, which tie into these things. So number one I talked about was Legereus Sneed. Without Legereus Sneed, Trent McDuffie's the guy. He's one of the best graded 
cornerbacks in football. You know, he's 5'8", feisty, comes up, tackles. He's great off the blitz, great in coverage. Damn good. PFF's number two overall ranked cornerback last year. Not that that means everything, but clearly it means that he has some serious game. He will more than likely run with the field with Zay Flowers. They have almost identical builds, 5'8", 5'9", stout, fast, quick. That's going to be a great matchup, and I expect to see that all game long. I, w- I w- would not be surprised to see McDuffie follow him around. With that being said, who does that open the field for? With no other wide receivers that are a true threat in Baltimore at this time, I think that Greg Monk will bring back the heavy 12 personnel. So Mark Andrews likely 12 personnel being one running back, two tight end. With Derrick Henry, that's their kind of offense. You know, I, I see it happening already. That opens the field for the other guys. If I think the best cornerback is going to be locked up on, say, Flowers, that opens the field for guys like Mark Andrews, Isaiah Likely. Isaiah Likely, one of my favorite draft picks coming out of Coastal Carolina. He was an unbelievable tight end with Grayson McCall at Coastal Carolina. Fell in the draft to the Ravens. Just a perfect fit. Now, he's a, he is as underrated a tight end as I think it gets in football. You saw what he did last year without Mark Andrews. He's a beast. Expect more 12 personnel. They're not going to keep him on the sidelines. With his receiving total only in the mid-20s, I'm a huge fan of Isaiah Likely. I also like some alternate overs for Isaiah Likely, over 40 yards, over 50 yards. I think he could be a focal point for the Ravens in this particular game. Uh, you're going to want to get the ball out semi-quick because, you know, you still have Chris Jones and Carl Loftus coming off the edge. Uh, but that is where I think the advantage lies for the Ravens. Uh, another prop that everyone and their mothers are hammering is Derrick Henry to score a TD. While he might score a TD, my math or my football mind tells me Lamar off the edge. What happens with Derrick Henry? You kind of got to pack the box a little bit. Sure, I think Derrick Henry is old and washed. But an old and washed Derrick Henry is still better than 70% of the running backs in the NFL. He's a beast up the middle. You catch him one-on-one, he's still going to win that battle more times than not. That being said, the read option. You know, I think it's, it's the same thing, I think, for the Colts this year. I think the Colts are going to be an absolute beast running that football with Jonathan Taylor, Anthony Richardson. That read option, RPO, is going to be tough to stop. I think the same thing with Derrick Henry and Lamar. Yeah, you know, play action, RPO. I think you're going to see Lamar get around the edge. Uh, while I'm fading the Derrick Henry touchdown, I would counter that with a Lamar touchdown. I think that he just has um, – a more likelihood of getting around the edge. He also drop back, fade, those kind of things. Uh, drop back, roll out, scramble, anything can happen. Uh, and when they get into the red zone, you know the Chiefs are going to pack the box, which just opens the possibility for Lamar to get around the edge for a rushing touchdown. Saw it all kinds in the playoffs. Next prop I like here is going to be a live insight. So actually no more props there. Those are the ones likely, big fan of likely today. But this is all about the live insight. I, I have no bet in this game before the game starts. It's a three-point game, a three-point spread. It's exactly where I think it should be in Kansas City. All these things going into it. But I think the real value in this game lies in the live line. So for the Ravens, I think they keep this game close one way or another. If the Chiefs come out first and they score and they go up 7 nothing, that spread should go to about 6.5, 7.5 right there in the middle somewhere. At that point, I will be taking the Ravens. I think that the Ravens plus seven uh, getting down, I think they'll be able to keep this one close. Absolute battle. Uh, So look for that one. On the flip side, the reason I don't like the Chiefs 100% is because of Matt Nagy. Matt Nagy gets way too cute, yada, yada, yada. We saw this last year, though, that when the Chiefs got down, they went to Mahomes. They didn't go for these cute play calls. They just put the ball in Mahomes' hands and said, go make some plays. When he when that happens, the Chiefs are the best team in football. So if the Ravens get up a touchdown early, that line will probably go to around two and a half, I imagine, one and a half uh, in the Ravens' favor. I'm looking for a two, a double-digit lead for the Ravens. If the Ravens get up 10 to 14, I will be smacking the Chiefs on the live line. They will be, I think this game is in that seven range, 100%. I think it's going to be a tight one. Don't see a blowout either way. Coming down the final whistle. So Chiefs, if they get down two scores, Ravens, if they get down seven, 
Good luck. God bless. Grind on. Let's have a great day.